A power meter is a training tool, and just like any other tool, you'll need to learn how to use it properly in order to use it effectively. Now, a power meter won't make you faster like a new set of aero wheels would, but with the right application of both time, effort, and attention to detail, you can make long-term gains in both speed and endurance. We sent our director of product and buying to catch up with Sir Chris Hoy and talk all things power. Um, so, do I, do I need to intro it? Or, no, it will be intro. Yeah. If you're an aspiring young rider, mm -hmm. is a power meter one of the best investments you can make? A power meter is, without doubt, a really useful um, tool and it is a big investment in your career. It's a bit like saying to somebody, I think it's a bit like saying to somebody um, who's looking at buying a new set of golf clubs or they could keep their set of golf clubs which are perfectly fine and spend the money on lessons. You know, you're investing in your future, you're investing in the biggest, the most important part of the overall package which is you. You know, that your bike, yeah, you can upgrade slightly on the components, this and that. You will make an improvement, but if you want to improve as an athlete um, and then you know, and actually look at a longer term development, you're better learning about what makes you improve, learning what makes you tick as an athlete, um, and to have something that you can genuinely, objectively measure your progress with and monitor your day-to-day -day sessions. There's, there's nothing else out there currently like it. Using different devices will give you different results with varying degrees of accuracy. Now, a lot of people like to use a heart rate monitor as a cost-effective means to both gather information and set their training zones. However, heart rate monitors do have their limitations. Your heart rate can vary day to day, depending on fatigue, illness and various other factors. Training in hot temperatures or indoors can also cause your heart rate to rise more quickly and not necessarily in line with your effort. On top of that, your heart rate doesn't respond immediately to effort, but continues to rise over the course of an interval. If you're practicing short sprints, your heart rate won't mirror the effort and will instead continue to rise when you're in your recovery phase. Over a 20 minute interval, your heart rate will take a little while to catch up with your effort, making it easy to go too hard in the first few minutes as a result of trying to bring your heart rate in line with the zone you want to hit. Comparatively, a power meter will show you the extra effort via an increase in what's produced immediately and will show you any decrease in effort immediately too, so no slacking. Other people like to monitor progress just by looking at increases in speed, but environmental factors can play a part in skewing this. We left it to Sir Chris to explain further. There's so many different things to consider. You know, you've got environmental conditions, you've got the, if you're outside, you've got the, the wind direction, speed, you've got temperature, air pressure, all these things affect how fast you go for the same effort. So power will always give you an exact um, number or an exact bit of information as to how hard you're working. Power meters almost seem a little bit too good to be true. And to be honest, aside from their high price, their downfalls are a little bit thin on the ground. It's not a bad thing. Now I'm gonna leave it with Sir Chris to round out this video and give you the professional's opinion on training with power. To, to summarize, I would say if someone was thinking about getting a power meter to use that for their training, I would wholeheartedly endorse it. I think it's a, to get something that can objectively measure your training, there's nothing else out there like it, but be aware of the risks. The risks are that the, the instrument isn't consistent and that it's not able to give you accurate measurements on an ongoing basis over weeks, months, years, and therefore you're comparing two things that aren't the same. Second of all, be sure that you know what to do with the data. Um, find somebody or a, a resource you can access that will give you um, a means to, to use that data in a positive way that you can actually do something with it, because the numbers mean nothing unless you can apply it to real life. And then thirdly, I would say don't become fixated by your power outputs because ultimately you have to enjoy riding your bike and if you become obsessed with numbers you know even at the highest level it's good not to become obsessed with numbers and um, you have to ride your bike every now and again without the power meter just go out and ride for fun look around don't just spend your time looking at this little box in front of you and we all do it um, so bear that in mind but if you if you use it well it's an incredibly powerful tool and it'll make massive uh, gains to your performance awesome thanks very much chris cheers thank you
think. So I think to summarise, I was going to summarise. Oh yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. I thought that's bit.